If a crane motor is awesome, how do you make it even awesomer? The answer is obviously add boost. In this video, we're gonna take two awesome crate motors and make them even awesomer. Now, everybody knows junkyard motors, that's my jams. But I also like crate motors for the following reasons. First of all, they're a known quantity. I mean, you get what you pay for. If they build a crate motor, they all do the same thing. You know what you get, and you can plan accordingly. The next thing is, it makes life easy. Whether you buy a short block or a long block or a complete motor, it's already done and assembled. It saves a lot of time. The last thing I like, and this definitely applies to motors like the 383 Power Router crate motor we got from Blueprint Engines, it comes with a warranty. I mean, this is a Power Router motor that they know you're gonna throw a ton of nitrous at or a ton of boost at, and they still have a warranty. And their warranty is a lot better than the 30-day warranty we normally get from the junkyard. So you got a lot of reasons to like these crate motors, but as awesome as they are, we're gonna make them even awesomer by applying boost. So let's check out the results of the test we ran by adding a Pro Charger Supercharger to our 383 and our ZZ 454. To illustrate how easy it is to make power with a simple order from the phone crate motor, we did that just that, and the guys from Blueprint Engine supplied a one of their 383 power adder crate motors. And the nice thing about that, as the name implies, the power adder combination was designed to accept a power adder. So we, we actually ran it with nitrous and boost and all kinds of stuff. But for this test, we're going to show you how to upgrade the crate motor with boost from a Pro Charger, because that works well. Turbos do too, nitrous says too. It all works good, but we're going to show you what we did with a Pro Charger. So the 383 uh, blower, like boost ready combo from the 383, obviously was a Stroker 383. So it was already had displacement, which was good. It was also equipped with a set of as cast aluminum performance heads that Blueprint makes, and it had a healthy camshaft in it. Now it wasn't crazy, but it was more than enough to make you know serious power, especially when you start adding boost to it. It was a 536 555 lift split. 224 236 degree duration split and 113 degree lobe separation angle so there's enough cam for a small block it's a little on the small side i think for a 383 but the nice thing is the this combination would drive around real nice and you know once you add boost the sky's the limit kind of for power production so we got uh, plenty of displacement we got low compression because it's a boost ready combination we get good heads what we had to do was add an intake manifold and for this combination we added an edelbrock victor jr intake kind of the quintessential single plane intake and we ran the motor naturally aspirated before adding boost so we installed a 750 holly ultra xp carburetor and the long tube headers and msd distributor after we did that running this thing na our low compression 383 produced 453 horsepower and 457 foot pounds of torque so now let's take a look and see what happened after we installed the pro charger so the Pro Charger that we installed was an F1A94, and it, that supercharger is kind of like the, <laughs> that's our go-to blower for all this stuff. It's capable of making a lot of power. We've done over 1,200 with it, so it will make a lot of power. All this testing for the Pro Charger was actually run on E85. And as you can see, and as we've come to expect from a Pro Charger, this thing had plenty of power. As a matter of fact, we put the biggest blower pulley, meaning the slowest speed and the least amount of boost we could run on this combination. This turned out to be a little over 15 pounds. We also ran the supplied air to water intercooler that we use on all these Pro Charger things. And so this was like a four and a half inch blower pulley and like an eight inch, or, or yeah, a four and a half inch blower pulley and an eight inch crank pulley. So with the air to water intercooler and the E85, and we were blowing through, uh, we replaced the Holly 750 Ultra XP carburetor. 
with our dedicated blow-through carburetor from CSU. So it's an 850, and we dialed in the air fuel with that thing. So this thing easily exceeded 800 horsepower. We're talking about 815 or so horsepower, and torque checked in at 686 foot-pounds of torque. But remember, there's a lot of power left in this combination because all we had to do is change to any one of the other seven or eight different blower pulleys that we had, and we could make a lot more boost and a lot more power. But this was a nice combination. As a matter of fact, for a street driver, I think I would want to have even less boost than this. So we would try to find like a 4.75 or a 5-inch blower pulley to bring the boost down. And then you could drive this thing around. Um, and ideally, I think for a, a daily driver kind of deal, I would even like to see this thing run as an EFI motor, so that would be kind of cool. You could tune it, get it to drive around. This is a mild cam, so the drivability would be really good. And with a boost and 800 horsepower, it's just, you know, it's kind of a ridiculous amount of power for a daily driver. But it definitely would be a lot of fun in a Camaro or Chevelle or a C10 truck or something. Good combination, good small block. Let's take a look at our big block. Test motor number two was another crate motor. This one came from GM. It was a ZZ454, a very popular big block Chevy crate motor. And before we ran it, we actually did a few upgrades to it. Now, it still had the factory rotating assembly that came with a crate motor and the aluminum oval port GM performance heads. We upgraded the valve springs and installed a slightly bigger camshaft in it. We put an Extreme Marine, an XM280HR cam from Comp Cams. The cam had a 547 lift a 230-236 degree duration split, and a 112 degree lobe separation angle. We also installed a Wyan Track Warrior single plane intake, a Holly 950 Ultra XP carburetor, and long tube headers. This thing also featured an MSD distributor so that we had a good enough spark for all of our combinations. And equipped as such, we ran this thing NA before we installed the supercharger. So our like you know, slightly modified crate motor produced 538 horsepower and 518 foot-pounds of torque. So here's what happened after we installed the Pro Charger. And the first Pro Charger we installed was a D1X. And we equipped it with a 4.5 inch blower pulley blowing through the air to water intercooler. And with that 4.5 inch pulley, it produced a, a peak boost of a whopping five pounds. But even at just five pounds, this combination, this blown big block produced 717 horsepower and 644 foot-pounds of torque. So then we did what every blower owner does, or turbo owner. We uh, upped the boost pressure by changing the pulley size. So we went down from a 4.5 to a 4.25 inch pulley. That added another pound of boost, brought the peak boost up to about six pounds, where this thing produced 759 horsepower. So thinking that a little bit is good you know, more must be even better. So we stepped down from the 4.25 inch pulley down to the 4 inch pulley. Peak boost went up right up to 800 horsepower and the peak boost was 7.1 psi. And then after running that blower pulley we decided, you know, let's try something else. What I did was install a radius air entry on the inlet side of the blower. I'll go ahead and show you a picture of that. It's kind of cool. Just, you know, basically a bell mouth so that we improve the airflow into the blower because the airflow into the blower has a direct uh, effect on the power and the airflow out of the blower. So I'll show you what happened. We had the same size pulley, but just with the radius entry, we increased the power output a little bit more. So the peak boost actually turned out to be 7.8 pounds at a slightly higher. We ran at another 100 RPM, but the peak power output jumped to 818 horsepower. So we were doing pretty good. Uh, but what we did cited here is that we were going to replace the D1X blower with something that we knew was going to make a lot of power. <laughs> so we installed our uh, our favorite blower, I think, for the for these combinations. That would was the Pro Charger F1A94. Certainly capable of you know we could make 1,200 horsepower with that thing. But we equipped the blower with a 4.25 inch blower pulley. It's still blowing through the CSU 850 carburetor and that air to water intercooler. Here's what happened after we installed the F1A94. Peak boost jumped up to 10.6 pounds, and the power output then exceeded, <laughs> easily exceeded 900 horsepower with a peak of 945. And again, you could take a look at the curve and see that that power curve is climbing basically straight up, and it made 945 horsepower at 10.6 pounds with a lot left. This thing could easily go into the four-digit power level if you wanted, which shows when you upgrade a crate motor with boost, 
good things happen. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what'd you think about our comparison? Our boosted crate motor comparison. Now we all know junkyards, that's my jams. But I do like these crate motors, especially a crate motor designed for boost, like that 383 from Blueprint Engines. But a crate motor designed for boost with a warranty, that's even better. So a crate motor, awesome. A crate motor with boost, even awesomer. And it worked on the small block, it also works on the big block. ZZ454, awesome. ZZ454 with Pro Charge Boost, even awesomer. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. More testing on crate motors, on junkyard motors. We test it all. More coming up.